Hi, everyone. Wow. Following Dana Nessel, you know, um, she said everything and my heart, I, I almost wanted to cry. But um, yeah, I, I would really appreciate the um, thank you. So I, I'm going to kind of focus in on how climate justice leads to social justice. Um, so to be honest, I never really thought about whether my participation in various projects and campaigns would lead to being nominated for any award. So I truly can't express how honored I am for my solidarity family to throw my name into the pot for consideration. Bye. Uh, there's a quote by Albert Einstein that is always in the back of my mind. In the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. It's really the foundation of everything that I do. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about crisis. Every crisis is happening right now in the moment. People rarely say a crisis is coming tomorrow until climate change became more evident. But for most people, you wake up in a crisis and say, I'm in a crisis right now. And a crisis rarely is a single event. Crisis comes in layers. For me, it was a job loss, a stroke, a lawsuit. But for others, it could be poverty, an earthquake, or war. In my experience, opportunities are both immediate and planned. They happen when we say, then I'll do this and we'll do that. Opportunities aren't, aren't corporate. They are creative responses to crisis that meets an immediate or future need. Climate change is a crisis with layers of opportunities to create equitable response. Next slide. I'm sorry, I'm old school in it with a paper. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the here and now, then and when projects I've been involved with, mostly this year. Uh, I selected these because I believe they are good examples of how the fight against climate change is diverse. Next slide. However, I wanna say a little bit more about my battle against DTE before I talk about solidarity. I'm elaborating on my story mostly to save face. Before 2003, I had never missed a payment with DTE. And I never missed a payment after signing onto the shutoff protection plan. The last bill I paid to DTE was $996. And no matter how many times I tried to get it reduced, they told me they could do whatever they want. My accumulated debt was around $5,400, $5,600. And during the DTE, um, uh, the, the, the legal uh, intervention, we found out that it was sold for $100 along with other people's debt. So I was sued during the pandemic, which as we all know was an unorganized chaos. I did pay the settlement amount in full, but I was told that I paid it after the deadline and they decided that they wanted the rest of the money. However, they cashed the check and a wonderful lawyer at Great Lakes Environmental Law settled my issue as of October of this year. It is finally over. It's been years. Next slide. Uh, during my, oh, you can go back one. <laughs> during my crisis with DTE, nope, back, 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 back. During my crisis with DTE, uh, I needed support. And I found a group of people who had similar experiences with DTE, but unlike me, these people were standing up to their abuser. So I joined Solidarity. With them, I gave testimony against DTE's prepay program and rate height. I worked as a community organizer. I became a member of Polar Bear Sustainable Energy Cooperative, which I now serve as vice chair. 
I also help with uh, the initial community needs program as community organizer. Uh, solidarity is the foundation of my here and now, then and when journey as a volunteer. Next slide. So Polar Bear was incubated by Solidarity and it serves members in Detroit, Island Park and Hamtramck but it's open to all Michiganders. Our mission is to help members become more energy efficient and energy independent through home efficiency retrofits and electrification projects. Uh, we uh, conducted extensive feasibility work. We identified residential energy efficiency as the most viable initial program for the cooperative and secured funding for our initial pilot program. We also identified community solar and rooftop solar bulk purchasing as key points of program development going forward. Next slide. Uh, the DOE Communities Leap works, uh, if you don't know, most of you probably already know this, but, uh, they work with organizations like Solidarity to facilitate sustained community-wide economic and environmental benefits primarily through clean energy work. Uh, this opportunity is specifically open to low income energy burden communities like Highland Park that are also experiencing direct environmental justice impacts and or direct economic impacts from the shift away from fossil fuels. So C-LEAP match solidarity in Highland Park with technical assistance providers uh, who assisted them with fleshing out a clean energy plan and creating an economic development vision. So in a meeting yesterday, uh, I learned about the then and when of the C-LEAP work Solidarity has planned and it will be released in a few weeks. So I'm not going to spoil the report. Please contact Solidarity to learn more about that. Uh, next slide. So oh, did you know that greenhouse gases uh, from food waste is a significant contributor to climate change in the, in the here and now? I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I attended a compost training at uh, Georgia Street Community Collective on the east side of Detroit. And this training was a collaborative with the Food Plus Detroit and the People's Compost Initiative. I'm using the training to collaborate with my community and compost collection companies to reduce our food waste. I was really impressed by the youth turnout and engagement to learn composting. This is a picture I took of some of the young men uh, turning the food waste in with the uh, leaves and water. They are my hope for then and when in the fight against climate change. Next slide. Uh, DTE shutoffs, the, uh, so DTE shutoffs and blackouts are a, a part of the here and now in Michigan. So when I was invited to participate in the emergency uh, collab, sorry, uh, let me start over. I received a phone call from the bank. ETE shutoffs and blackouts are a part of our here and now in Michigan. So when I was invited to participate in the emergency battery collab training, I jumped at this chance. The training provided by the People Power Battery Collective in California was six weeks of battery sharing examples and discussions about how to implement, implement it to where we live. So here I learned about how to scale batteries to household needs, onboarding members, and the science behind building backup batteries. What really appealed to me is that the batteries are shared among members in a community, no matter if the community is local or if it's spread across uh, the city. Um, these batteries will be made available free of charge for anyone who becomes a member. I'm working currently with the Eastside Tool Library, and we're going to teach teens how to build the batteries and start membership, hopefully by the summer of 2024. Next slide. Uh, tomorrow, uh, 
<laughs> this is all going on to myself so tomorrow. So there are many people in crisis with shut off notices and hopefully not too many blackouts uh, from DTE. And this is here and now. So tomorrow I'm going to be training on how to intercede in DTE shutoffs. I've learned that most of the work doesn't take a law degree. It's mostly knowing your rights as a rate payer and available programs. I can't speak too much on this yet, but I'm hoping to be armed with enough knowledge to build a network of interveners in my community. And next slide. So I'd like to uh, leave you with a call to action. Fighting climate change isn't just about fossil fuel reduction. Climate change is an opportunity to express our humanity. We all, we can all do something that will have a big impact on the people in our communities. I shared only a few of my here and now, then and there crisis and opportunity examples because I look for them. I look for these opportunities. And my hope is that I what I've shared, it will inspire you to look for yours and let's be, revolutionaries together. Thanks.